To bear arms, both colliding in healthcare town halls. Contessa has the reporting. What's yeah, going on? Dylan, police in New Hampshire headed off what could have been a dangerous situation here inside or outside the president's town hall Tuesday. They arrested this man, Richard Terry Young, on weapons charges. They say he walked into the event with a pocket knife, and inside his car then they found a loaded gun, which Young was not licensed to carry. They also say he did not have a ticket to attend that town hall. No word on what, if anything, he'd been planning, but the Secret Service is now investigating as well. Another guy who grabbed a lot of headlines here in the Granite State yesterday, William Kostrick. He was caught by television cameras protesting outside the Portsmouth Town Hall with a gun strapped to his leg. The sign he carried read, it's time to water the tree of liberty. And it added to the controversy because the sign paraphrased Thomas Jefferson's quote, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Kostrick apparently left the protest peacefully before the president even arrived. And then he faced off with Chris Matthews. Why did you bring a loaded gun to a public meeting? Well, here in New Hampshire, uh, I know is, the law. You can okay. chew gum at church. You can do it. You can ride in on a pogo stick. There's a lot right. of things you're legally allowed to do. Why did you bring a gun to a meeting with the president of the United States, given the violent history of this country with regard to presidents and assassinations? Why did you bring a gun to a public event with the president? Well, Chris, you know the history of this country. If you love this country, you know its history. Well, you know we've I, had a I, problem I, with people with guns at presidential events. Mm -hmm. Why'd you bring a gun to right. an event I, with the I, president? I do, I, I do know history, and the, the history is that uh, our forefathers fought for the right to keep and bear armed, and they believe I, that I every person that. should be armed. Everybody knows that. You brought a sign that said the Tree of Liberty has to be watered with the blood of tyrants, and you're carrying a goddamn gun uh -huh. at a presidential event. Yeah, I think those that's, things that's make people wonder what you're about. I, you got to just love that, right? I mean, Chris Matthews was not giving that guy an inch. Police asked Kostrick to move back from the school property, but they said because the gun was in plain view, he was within his legal rights to be out there with the gun strapped to his leg. And then there was this at a health care meet and greet in Arizona. A protester dropped a gun just a few feet from a Democratic congresswoman. Apparently, it slipped out of the holster. Police say the whole thing was an accident and that the protester, once again, was licensed to carry a concealed weapon. But with all the anger, you know, it's scary. Okay, the other piece to all of this, the Southern Poverty Law Center says it is seeing a rise in recruiting videos from militia groups which gripe against the government. And there are fears they're regrouping. The study by this uh, center cites the stress of, poor, of the poor economy and, and the liberal administration that's led by a black president. All of those things factored in contribute to the rise of militia. To that end, Mark Podock, uh, director of the Intelligence Project with the Southern Poverty Law Center, who's been studying the growth of militias in this country. Also, Paul Hemke is president of the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence. Mark, I want to begin with you, though. What, do we have more militias in this country now? Where are they and what are they doing? I don't think there's any question at all. It's not only our own reporting, but also the reporting of law enforcement officials around the country who have noticed uh, really the reappearance of these armed groups, groups that actually uh, conduct paramilitary training in the woods and that sort of thing. You know, and at the same time, we're seeing the rhetoric, the ideology, the militias all over the place. It's uh, uh, as what you are, mentioned, so what it's are two or three of the what are two YouTube or three of the, the big and so on. What are two or three of the big uh, talking points in terms of the rhetoric in the militia? That you is there, is there any consistent theme? Well, that the, that the country is being lost, that the country our sort of Christian white forefathers created is being stolen from us, we're being robbed, and this is all being kind of hyped up, I think, and, and accelerated by the fact that we have a black president. Uh, so, so among certain you know, quarters of the population pe feel that somehow that's not right, uh, that the country will never be the same again, we're heading into socialism and so on. So there's a combination of the bailouts, some racism, and undefined fear as a result of a weakened economy. Is that a fair assessment? Well, yes, I think also the whole idea of the, the really uh, dramatic demographic changes uh, happening in the country as kind of apotheosized uh, in Obama's presidency uh, is really a primary factor. In other words, uh, you know, the Census Bureau says that America will lose its white majority in the year 2042, and that has uh, at least a fairly large subset of the white population in this country worried and, and uptight about and the where the country is going, here. and some of them feel that the country fast has been sold. Yeah. This is Ohio um, video 
on YouTube, it's getting hundreds of thousands of hits. People going on to watch this Ohio this militia. This militia training. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul Hemke uh, with us as well from the uh, Brady campaign to prevent gun violence. There's sort of two schools of thought, or many schools of thought on guns, I suppose. <clears throat> Excuse me. But what is your sense, Paul, on how best to manage for gun violence? In other words, I, you, get, you understand the question. How do you yeah. deal with it? Well, well, first of all, I mean, what, what this shows is just how crazy and how weak our gun laws are that we can allow people to, uh, uh, to go to these events uh, and carry guns, that we can allow them to be close to the president with these guns. I was a mayor in Fort Wayne, Indiana for 12 years. I did a lot of public hearings. I've been at public hearings where people were carrying guns, and it, it does three things. First of all, it puts everyone else at danger because these people might misuse it. Secondly, it stifles debate. When someone sees someone else carrying a gun, uh, they're less likely to speak their mind. And thirdly, it really encourages this idea that you can take uh, the law into your own hands, this idea of insurrectionism, this idea that uh, you don't have to follow the laws. And uh, that's what we're seeing, I think, with the report from the, from the Poverty Center. That's what we're seeing with these people carrying the guns. Hey, Paul, Nancy Snyderman, people won't know that you and I have known each other forever in <laughs> a day because... I grew up in Fort Wayne, Indiana, yeah. um, and I voted for Humkey for mayor. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> I want to shift gears a little yeah, bit from the fact that we white people are going to be a minority at some mm -hmm. point in this country, that we are a hot button issue when it comes to immigration, that there is a financial shift. But the one thing we never talk about in this country is language. Mm -hmm. The balkanization in the United States of America because we no longer look at English as being this core language. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm going to sound so right of center on this, but I worry that while we should engage and, and embrace cultures from around the world, that melting pot's what's made us strong, we have allowed a fractionization of our native tongue by to the point by English as a national language. Well, by too. saying that this is how we speak. And you know, you come from Wall Street. Yeah. You don't hear people with 10 or 12 different languages mm -hmm. on the floor in, in, in Wall Street. I worry, Paul, that this is one of the things that we've allowed to become this insidious undercurrent. Well, obviously a lot of people fear any kind of a change and they see uh, people speaking a different language as a different change. Although it's even interesting, you look back at Indiana history when uh, Indiana adopted its constitution in 1850, they printed the ballot or they printed the, the Constitution in both German and English because so many people in Indiana spoke German at the time. It does take time uh, to assimilate. I think the crucial thing is we need to learn how to talk to each other, how to communicate with each other, and understand that our system of government says that the majority rules and that you can't have someone taking the law into their own hands just because they're resentful of change, resentful of Understood, somebody new, but I, but or I, don't I, like what's I, going the, on. I guess the only place I take issue with that is when you watch a community of people enrich themselves at the expense of the taxpayer, whether it's the bailout for the car makers, the bailout for the bankers, uh, any of these things are, are valid anger. In other words, if you believe in capitalism and you believe that you actually should have to work to make money as opposed to figuring out a way to scam to make money, you can understand why the frustration level has reached a peak. Not that it should lead to guns, by the way. There should, we would ideally have healthier channels for these frustrations. But, but guns whether it's give any people control. Get, guns give people who other Otherwise, right. feel sure. like someone mm -hmm. else is taking all the control. It's a militias are a way for people to say, "I have influence over my mm -hmm. own destiny." Uh, it is not of, all in the government's hands. Yeah. Yeah. A fellow in Kirkwood, Missouri, a year and a half ago, went to the courts, didn't like what the courts did. Right. Went to the city council, didn't like what they did. He took the gun, killed the mayor, killed two police officers, and some other city council members. Yeah. That's what we've got to prevent against in this society. Yeah. Uh, no, right. I think Paul's right. Yeah. Uh, Paul, thank you, Mark. Uh, a pleasure. Still ahead here uh, on the, the morning meeting. Camelot, uh, the Kennedys entering a new era. Who will be the standard bearer for the next generation of that family? We'll have that conversation right after this.